Hello YouTube, let me turn this up so it's all working. You may hear some YouTube silliness be going on in the background and some Facebook pop-ups because I just got home from the hospital. I have some things to talk about. I am very nauseous, very much still. I'm actually radioactive still. <laughs> Hang on, one second. Okay, and I have returned and obviously if you guys haven't noticed, where the hell have you been? I dyed my hair. I am actually quite pleased with the color except the back of it needs to be retouched already. So it means that probably in a week from now, I will be re it already because it didn't get enough coverage in the back. But in the front, it looks great <laughs> in comparison. So I'm expecting a phone call, so when that phone call comes through, I will be putting this video on pause or on stop and having to make two parts. I don't know. Hopefully I won't have to, but... So I went to the stomach testing, stomach emptying testing, um... I was supposed to go at 1 o'clock, and I ended up going at 11. Here's some of that lovely bud. Oh, I just dropped a bunch of it. Of the strawberry, I mean, no, not strawberry, listen to me. Of the cherry, the cherry. Kush. So, um, the stomach emptying test, basically goes on for however long the doctor orders the test to go on, apparently, because when I was in there, I was in there two hours, but for the person before me who had the exact same test, ended up having, had only been there for like an hour, apparently. It wasn't quite two hours, and they had to go do like a second follow-up thing the next day, which I thought was strange. I didn't ask questions because it's another patient, but I just was in the same room waiting for this person to be done. And basically, it's the same situation that I went through. They were given something to eat. I wasn't there when the solution was put on their meal, as it was on mine. They gave me bread. Cheers, everybody. I'm so sick to my stomach. It's not even funny. So. One more minute. <coughs> so, initially they were planning to give me a tuna fish sandwich. I'm a vegetarian. That doesn't work out. So, he said, do you mind an egg salad sandwich? I said, yes, I do mind that. I don't want that. It will make me just as sick. I hate eggs. I will eat them if they are mixed in something where I can't taste it and my stomach's not overpowered by the animal protein. I guess that's what it is. I don't really know. But, um, so initially when I got into the test, I was able to get there early, which really was awesome. Because even when I finished the test, I finished it an hour after I would have, um, or an hour earlier than when I would have. I would have been out of there by 3 o'clock, so this time right now I would have been leaving. But because I went early... I um, was able to get a lot of it out of the way, time-wise. So I go in, I wait, and initially, like I said, they ask you what kind of food, basically, can you handle this, are you going to eat this, da 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 Can you have juice, can you, what kind of bread do you want, that kind of thing. And I literally was like, just white bread and water is fine. So they gave me apple juice and white bread with this syringed radioactive clear solution that was on top of the bread. And he cut it into little squares and the guy was a complete jackass but that has nothing to do with it the, the actual doctor was fantastic but the tech was an asshole like literally we had it out a few times because he kept saying weird shit like well maybe it's in your head quite literally that's not his place to say first off i've been through a plethora of tests this month and nobody in their right mind goes through a plethora of tests unless they actually have something wrong which I do. So I was really irritated by him, and I was like, I know that you think you're helping me, but that is actually not helping me. Because he's like, well, maybe we'll find nothing. Maybe we'll be fine. And I'm like, not even stressed about the test. I just wanted the test. So he kind of like induced all this anxiety initially where I was just annoyed with the guy. And then the doctor took over, thank God, and because they were feeding the tech, the guy I was annoyed with was feeding me the bread and giving me, oh, my phone call's coming through. Hang on a second. Well, this video is going to be discon or re continued in a moment. I have to go get my prescription. My insurance is fucking up, apparently. I only have half my insurance all of a sudden, so... 
wonderful. So I'm going to have to go deal with that right now, but I will be back. So stay tuned for the rest of this vlog. Wait, you know what? Fuck it all. Fuck it. F and all. They said 15 minutes, so I'm just screw it. We're going to finish this, this in the next 15 minutes. I'll make it 20 minutes. But I don't know what the hell is going on with my insurance. It's so weird. Like, I just got a phone call from the insurance company, not from my friend. Anyway, to add on to all the stress I'm already dealing with. So, um, and I just had a procedure this morning. So what the hell is my insurance company not paying for it? But they, luckily it went through the other insurance. Oh, it's drama. Drama. Anyway, so, <laughs> back to the moment. So they gave me the, the bread. They, I was sitting in the machine for quite a while. Um, and probably about 45, almost 50 minutes, it was like 48 minutes, when I looked on the little screen, because they have this, like, screen above you where it shows you where the radioactive food that you're digesting is going in your system. Well, quite literally, immediately, um, at the 45-minute point, the doctor came over and said, how are you feeling? I said, I'm, I'm actually hurting quite a bit. I had dozed off a little bit between the first minute to the 45 minutes, but at that 45, almost 50 minute mark, I was in a lot of pain, like a lot of esophagus pain. Um, speaking of which, so, unfortunately, I was just kind of trying to brit and bear it and deal with it and um, the doctor came over and said, well, you see that little white area, because where your esophagus is, where you first swallow food, and then there's, like, it kind of goes to, like, a, to the left. I think it kind of goes to the left. Anyway, it just kind of goes down, like, shoop, and then your stomach's there, okay? Well, for some reason, it wouldn't get past the point, meaning, like, it wouldn't completely, the, the lower esophagus, I don't know what that part of the stomach is, but it wouldn't release into the rest of the GI tract, let's put it that way. So your first, where it all kind of stores in your esophagus, it wasn't going into the actual stomach as quick. It was taking two hours to get even 50%. No, it's, she said, he said 20% um, digestion, which is ridiculous. So it means that, that means that my food is taking freakishly long to digest which would make sense why this is making it actually possible for me to eat and why I never have an appetite and why I'm always nauseous. I was nauseous before the procedure. I was nauseous after. I was in a lot of pain during the initial chewing and swallowing and you people have to understand I love food. I like eating. I have no problem with being fat. If I end up being fat, fuck it. <laughs> but this is seriously painful to eat. It has been painful to eat pretty much continually, non-stop daily struggle since 2007. Non-stop, like, for sure. Um, and that was pretty much when I started changing my, my habits and trying to figure out what I could do to try to help myself eat because I went through a whole year in 2006 of doing everything over the counter and trying to just figure out what the hell to do and at that point I went black market and started smoking and it worked I finally could eat again I finally could have some sanity again um, so I don't know if it's my esophagus freaking out because that's what the doctor even mentioned maybe my esophagus is, and he did say esophagus it's exactly the words he said esophagus so yes <laughs> uh, he said maybe it's not opening big enough for the food to come out and maybe that's my part of my problem he couldn't give me any specifics. He couldn't even diagnose what the situation was. But what scares me is that, number one, let's think of all this stuff, okay? Because I had another 40 fucking five minutes, almost. It was an hour, total other hour, to think about what the hell this could mean and, and all of the, the realizations of it. If my esophagus is not letting food go through, which would make my nutrition is not to what it should be, meaning I, that's why I'm getting sick so often, it would make sense if the food sitting in the top of my esophagus just sitting there for hours. That would make sense why my digestive tract's always screwed up in the lower intestines. The food's got to actually give me some nutrition, and if it's sitting there just gargling, I'm wondering, I don't know, and for some of you who can't handle information like this, you're on the wrong freaking blog. <laughs> but 
it's crazy. It actually could make a lot of fucking sense. If they, they found damage at the bottom of the stomach so far, it's supposedly what me and my friend Wendy could fathom from my report, she can look at legal documents a little bit easier and medical documents a little bit easier than I can, but she was reading it and it making perfect sense to where the doctors were pinpointing on the biopsy and all this. So it looks like the upper esophagus from what the doctor saw with the camera scope just recently actually might have not taken enough emphasis on the actual upper esophagus, the actual, the processing of the food to get it to the stomach. So maybe by the time it gets to the stomach, it's so fucking who knows what. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but this is a huge possibility of questions, of new questions of like, what the fuck does this mean? So, and the reason that I'm making so much emphasis on it is the doctor said, were you watching it for this 45 minutes? I said, no, I was falling asleep here and there. He says, well, look. And there was like that little white spot right where my top of my esophagus was. You could see it just dance. Just go up and down and slowly trickle food down. But so, so, so little that the doctor was completely mortified by that. And the first 45 minutes that I had not had at least that digestion, at least of it, going to the lower part of my stomach. It's like it's choosing how much it wants to pull and then storing and then pulling and storing. And Because by the time the first hour was done, a good, the first full hour was done, I needed to use the restroom. So I'm telling you, I could even see from the graph that the lower GI was already starting to get, get digestion too. So it's like, this could really explain a lot. Maybe I am like eating food and it's not digesting for four, five, God, who knows how long. Because as the test ended, which was only two hours, it's how long they kept the picture on me. The radiologist keeping this square thing on, over my stomach, over the GI area. Pretty much the entire part was like this to the lower GI. Um, was like, I said, so am I supposed to stay? And he says, no. <laughs> I mean, I've in my career, I have never seen anything like that. That's what he said. And I was really confused by that because what is all this? The GI doctor doesn't know what's going on. My radiologist is confused. <laughs> or, yeah, radiolo yeah, he would be a radiologist. The radiologist who performed the test would be is confused. He even said to me, I bet you're going to be in here again, which I was a little confused about. So I don't know if that means they'll try me on new meds and then do this test again. I don't know if I know what that meant, but... What the fuck? <laughs> so I really now feel like, hey, listen... <laughs> That makes it, because it was exactly where he said, he says, does this hurt? Does this, all this hurt? I said, yes. It was like so, the weirdest, it's the weirdest experience. So if you have heartburn, I know what heartburn feels like. I haven't had it in years. And I know this is not heartburn, 100%. But the same way that it kind of da dances up and down and makes big burps and you think you're going to about throw it up pretty much the little warning I get before I throw up. So I'm laying on this table. I'm in the first hour and a half. I'm not quite to the end of it. And it was just bouncing. I mean, gurgling. And I couldn't, and he had me strapped in this thing where it zip, it like, not zips, but Velcro's over you. So your arms are literally next to you, bound next to your arm or next to your thighs bound. And I could literally move my hand like that. That was it. <laughs> and I would for the blood circulation, because I had such pain in my shoulders and my neck, all of that. But he had me on a kind of like a wedged, upright, somewhat upright, slightly elevated upright, because she'd be like, 47 degree. <laughs> Not quite, yeah, anyway, upright, slightly upright. And I was already, at several times, thinking... Why didn't they give me a bell or something? Because if he, because he kept stepping out of the room and the other doctor too, I'm really surprised he did not throw up the freaking bread. Because seriously, by that over that hour peak, it just was sitting there. It wasn't moving. And yes, people, I don't eat white bread that often. But I've eaten bunny bread many a times in the last year, and never have had any other op you know, option than to eat it. How I eat everything else, which is just to kind of. It hurts to eat. When I eat, I really have to make a decision. Am I about to induce pain? Because that's really, truly how it feels. So when I saw this, I could see the picture. I could see the physical food sitting there. And the doctor being concerned about it. Red flagging all that was huge. Like, I mean, first off, it was like, I'm being heard. Wow, they, they actually fucking see. 
what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know what the report looks like when they actually print it out. I'm going to actually get it tomorrow. I'm sure it'll probably be snapshots, but they took 120 pictures of the stomach through the two hours. So that's a whole, the total of a picture a minute, obviously. Um, I'm not sure how and what we're going to do next, but as of tomorrow morning, as early as 7.30, I'll be calling my primary to see what they have available to get me in tomorrow, because I'm trying to sit down with the, the doctor and say, okay, here it all is. GI doctor won't call me back. Can't find another one. Help me find one. <laughs> There's the test results. What shall we do? That's literally what I'm going to do, because at this point, I, I'm not even sure if I should sit here and wait and wait and wait and wait for the GI, because... I've called him this morning, called him yesterday, I called him last Friday, I've called him every day, except today. I didn't call him this morning. Did I call him this morning? Maybe I did. I did call him this morning. <laughs> so, I'm at like this point where I'm like, there are obviously something seriously visually wrong going on, so they can see it. There's this new test that's actually red flagging it, and we've got another visual from the inside of the stomach. I'm ready for the lower GI. What the fuck is going on? If it's the lower GI that's at the disrupt mode at all at the end of this hell from the little things I'm feeling to now who knows what's in the, the lower GI, it has to be ordered. It has to be ordered. I need a lower scope. So, so we'll find out what tomorrow, what the what the rheumatologist, or, wait, radiologist, radiology department deem it as if I need to, if they're going to refer me to somebody else, or who knows, I don't know how that all goes. I just know the report's being sent to my primary, but I'm going to get a copy tomorrow for my own records, so, we'll see what happens. I'm so tired, so fucking tired, that's all I can say about all this, I'm like, can we figure it out, can we start working on it, and this medication that I'm going to pick up, like, any minute, next five minutes, I gotta go drive over there, it is for stomach irritation. And I'm not sure if it's going to be helpful or not, but as of tomorrow morning, I'm gonna start taking it, but because I have all this crazy radioactiveness inside of me right now, I'm not really feeling like it's even safe to chance any of my meds right now. So, being that nothing obviously digests properly in my body, <laughs> fucking comical. I mean, like, the fact that it sat there! The fact that it fucking sat where it hurt! Where it hurt! I mean, I didn't even say anything to the, the... I didn't say a word to them about I was uncomfortable or the nausea or any of that. So when he came over and he's like, Are you okay? Have you been seeing? It's not moving. I'm not okay. I see it. And I did not know it was that serious. Whoa. <laughs> that was truly my response. So, and then when... The test was done down to the, like, ding, ding, you're cooked, you know, you're done. There's nothing else we can say. Like I said, should I keep sitting here? Should we keep looking and see once it finally digests? He says, I, no. <laughs> he was, like, kind of shocked. Not by me, but by the situation. It's so crazy, so. There might be some answers. So this is probably why cannabis works. It fucking relaxes it, I guess. Because as soon as I smoke, my GI doesn't feel like it's, ah! Like, it's just the weirdest fucking feeling. Like, um, from a tightness to, to, like, water goes over it. So whatever this is doing, if it's causing the mucus, that maybe then helps the food go down, I don't have to know. But that's for a long time, that's what I believed it was. Like, as soon as I smoke, I'll describe it. I'm very nauseous in my esophagus. Here, I'll... Right there. And so that being... And immediately, as soon as I exhale, I feel it go just slowly down the esophagus, like the a numbing sensation. It's incredible. If you deal with nausea, try cannabis. Try cannabis. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. Um, truthfully. So I have about a minute to go, less than a minute to go.
stay tuned. I will obviously do more videos on what's going on and how everything turns out tomorrow. I'm pretty tired. I have to go get back in the car right now. Go deal with the prescription. And maybe I'll make a part two. I will try to edit this video. If not, you guys are going to get random Wednesday randomness. <laughs> wow. This is a wow Wednesday. <laughs> so, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.